So how do you feel about the RoboCop remake, honestly? Today on the show, we're gonna be talking about a cinematic classic, one of my favorite movies of all time, RoboCop. Go Robo! So why are we talking about RoboCop today, you may ask? Well, it's for a number of reasons. Uh, one of those is, in fact, th that they're making a new RoboCop remake movie. Ah, uh, boo! Uh, but that isn't the only reason why we're talking about this today. We're talking about this today because this is, like, seriously a classic. Uh, I think it's totally relevant to today. It's got a really great story. It's got really amazing effects. A lot of people haven't seen it, which is crazy to me. It's like... You've never seen RoboCop? Like, oh, that's such a bummer. And one of my greatest fears is that this new RoboCop movie coming out, all these all these kids will, will go see that one, and they will never see the original one, and they'll think that that's fucking RoboCop. Oh, stupid kids today. Oh, no jack shit. I take my order from... So why is RoboCop so great? Well, essentially, uh, in a nutshell, RoboCop is not just about uh, Alex Murphy becoming a machine and being like Voice a sentient machine. It is also about uh, a possible future timeline where uh, a society is crumbling from a terrible economic crash. It's crime-ridden. They can't afford to pay their cops, so a giant mega corporation, OCP, buys out the police department and that turns out to be a bad idea, surprise. And, uh, you know, it's all about corporate fuckery and, and how that could affect our society and also about how one man can transcend death and find his place in the world. RoboCop, who is he? What is he? Where does he come from? So let's start this whole thing off by telling you why I feel like this movie is so great. Uh, first of all, it's set in my favorite time period, the future 80s. I love future 80s movies. Um, and second of all, I feel like any movie set in the future that's worth its salt is also about the problems facing the times that it was made in, and RoboCop definitely delivers on that end. Uh, it really has brilliant social satire. Uh, it warns of the dangers of unchecked privatization. It also shows corporate fuckery on a grand scale. They were filming a movie about a future that they were afraid we could possibly be heading towards, and uh, I think it's safe to say that it's eerily relevant to today in a lot of ways. Jesus, you really screwed up. And not only is RoboCop thematically, like, pretty awesome, it's also just a solid movie all around. It's got a good script, it's got good acting, good directing, the practical effects look amazing, uh, it's got over-the-top violence, and it's also a hardcore to the bone adult superhero flick. It's rated R. All of the superhero films I've seen this summer have been PG-13. And as you probably have guessed, another one of the reasons that I love this movie is because of all of the amazing practical effects that were going on in it. You got squibs going off like crazy. You got stop motion animation. You have amazing this fucking suit, this fucking practical effects suit made by Rob Bottin. Oh my God. And they had uh, Phil Tippett doing all the stop motion stuff for Ed 209. And man, like those guys were like the fucking guys. Like they were at the height of the 80s practical effects stuff. They were doing things no one had ever done before. Bottom line, there are just a ton of practical effects scenes that are just burned into your mind after watching this film so good. And something else that I really appreciate is the fact that this movie has so many memorable moments, like catchphrases. I'd buy that for a dollar. You hear people quoting that shit and they don't even know what it's from and they still quote it, you know, and that's, uh, that's pretty powerful. That's how you do it in the big leagues, Johnson. You see an opening and you go for it. Yeah, this is perhaps not, uh, it's not Shakespeare, but it is a script with more layers than you think. Side note, Something that should be avoided at all costs is any other subsequent RoboCop movie or television show. They are so bad, you only need to concern yourself with the first movie. The second one is like 
may be passable. The third one is a complete pile of shit. Uh, and I do own the television series ones on DVD, but I haven't even watched them because I'm just so afraid of how bad they're gonna be. Like it's kinda, it might ruin my night with how bad they're gonna be. So let's all just pretend that none of the other ones exist and there's only just one. So I feel like we should take a minute to talk about why I feel like remaking this movie is a bad idea. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to start this whole thing off by saying that I am not entirely against remakes and reboots. It's all a case-by-case -case basis type situation. There are good reasons to remake a movie, like it wasn't done right the first time. And there are bad reasons to remake a movie, like, oh, people will know this name, so they will go to the seats and fill them like zombies. <laughs> And there are some really good remakes out there, remakes that I love. Uh, one of them being The Fly from the 80s. I was a remake of the movie from the 50s. Seeking revenge with a thousand eyes. Smashing anything that stands in his way. <laughs> Same with uh, The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing. Ugh, what an amazing movie. And there are amazing reboots out there as well. For example, Dread. Uh, that movie should have been remade. The Sylvester Stallone one was not up to par, and the new one totally was. And I was glad to see it finally get uh, the movie that it deserves. But there are some movies out there that I feel like they should never be remade because they're just such perfect films in their own little bubble. I don't know, they just don't need to be fucked with, you know? I mean, they're just perfect the way they are, and you don't need to taint that. And I think that we can all agree that the Total Recall remake was just, just completely unnecessary and terrible, and did not approve upon the original source material in any way, shape, or form. Quaid. Cut. Get ready for a surprise! Uh, so, I think this is gonna be another one of those. It's like Robocop is so of its time. It's so, such a perfect film, and and it's not based on a comic book, it's not based on a book, it's its own original property. It came out first as a movie, it's its own thing, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it needs to stay that way, all right? It's classy. Leave it alone. It's classy, like me. Like Robot. It's a classy robot. Because he doesn't have internet access. <laughs> Can't watch all that porn. <laughs> and another thing. Uh, I don't think it's wise to insult your audience right off the bat. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. It may not make it into the final movie, but in the original uh, RoboCop remake script that was leaked online, uh, apparently there's a scene where the boardroom guys are trying to figure out how to make him look, and uh, they're, they're showing him all these different designs, and one of the designs that they show is the original RoboCop, and they all laugh and said, it looks like a toy from the 80s, oh, you know? And it's like, why are you insulting the original design, which is beautiful and flawless and amazing, and what makes me love the franchise in the first place, and it, it just and just telling me that it's stupid. Like, that's a really dumb move. And it makes me lose faith in the entire movie because you guys don't appreciate your source material, which is gonna be far superior to whatever crap you guys put out. Thank you for your cooperation. But this new shit? That guy looks like he's wearing a rubber suit. Sorry, does. The brilliance of the original RoboCop was that they cast Peter Weller because he's a small guy and they could really like build up off of him and make him look like an actual robot because there's like his neck pieces are like so small and they built, it looks so good. It looks not like a man in a suit. It looks like a fucking robot. Sometimes we were e really rubbing it with, with, uh, with oil or wax or something that it really got shiny and I always put a lot of different lights from different directions so that the appearance of the, of the Robocop was like a figure of reflections. You could always see it outlined in light. It has a power. I always got the camera very low, on very low angles, and the lower the camera is, the more the camera looks up to him, the bigger Robocop appears. Murphy transferring in from Metro South. Side note, Peter Weller, who played Robocop, recently rewatched the film. He hadn't seen it in about like 10 years or something like that. I uh, watched it at a screening and uh, he was like really impressed with it and thought that it really held up and that it really was relevant to the times. And he also had this to say about it. Do you feel it's necessary to make remake any movie? And if so, what's a RoboCop remake gonna be? <laughs> no, 
to redo movies, like some of the great movies, is really sinful. It is. There yeah. should be a Sometimes list of 25 movies that you should not ever touch. Listen, there's only one thing that's changed. The technology has changed. Storytelling and movie making is still the same, but that's the gift of RoboCop, you know, is its humor and its poignant story of resurrection and redemption and its particular political message uh, for anybody who wants to seize it. That's why it's not the, the only distinction now is that you could throw a million dollars or more or eight, $80 million CGI. So it's going to be a hard movie. Sorry, guys. Wish you well. Hard movie to beat. What are your prime directives? Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. So it's come to my attention that a lot of people out there haven't even seen the original RoboCop. What a travesty. Uh, and this is your chance, this is your prime directive, is to go out and watch the 87 RoboCop if you haven't already. Uh, you can get it on Blu-ray. And uh, if you want some sweet documentary behind the scenes type of stuff, I would say definitely check out the Criterion collection of RoboCop on DVD. Uh, this one does not have all that sweet extra goodies. It's just the movie. Um, so I have them both. It's a little weird, whatever. Don't judge. But seriously, do yourself a favor because like this is, this, it's like saying I haven't seen Predator. I haven't seen Alien or Aliens. It's like, you gotta go, you, you, you don't have a choice. Let me explain another thing about the magic of RoboCop for me personally when I was growing up. Uh, this movie is ultra violent. Like it is rated R and it deserves that R. <laughs> and when I was a kid, it was like a treat to see it, you know, cause like you weren't supposed to see it cause it was so like gory and violent and shit like that. And it was just like, Ooh, I get to see RoboCop today. You know, sneak into your friend's house and shit and like fucking in their basement and their parents don't know and they're off cutting the lawn. It's awesome. <laughs> There is a growing problem I see, and maybe it's not just today, it's just now that I'm aware of it, but nowadays, you know, you're completely bombarded constantly with advertisements for new movies, new television shows, all these sorts of things, and they're like, these are the best, you know, these are new, and they're gonna knock your socks off, and they're gonna fuck everything else that came before it. And, you know, that's really not a great attitude to have. Like, somebody needs to be there to, like, lobby for art from the past, and... I guess that's gonna be me this time. I'm gonna champion older films because unfortunately, a lot of the younger generation uh, and even my generation like will not watch, you know, what they consider to be older movies, uh, which are movies potentially from the 80s and backwards. And that's just such a shame, man. It's just like, it's so dumb because you know what? You're just being manipulated into thinking that new stuff is better, okay? Like, yeah, there are some, things that are better in movies today, okay, whatever. But that doesn't mean that every single movie from the past is not worth shit and not worth watching. And I kind of am a little bit sad that a lot of the young people today kind of have a cutoff point for their own personal influences, and that's like, they don't know a lot of pictures in the pre-60s. This is like the first time in history that we have like this much media. I mean, there's like a ton of movies and we're just like cranking them out and cranking them out and cranking them out. Like, back in the day, like, they didn't put out fucking a million movies every fucking summer, you know? It's like you had Jurassic Park and it stayed in the theater all summer, you know? Can you imagine that now? Shit, like, things are out in a month. Like, ah, get out of here. Didn't do well. Ugh, next. It's crazy. It's a lot of media. So, yeah, fuck you. If you're only watching new movies, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. And you should probably check out some of the amazing films from over the years. <laughs> What about RoboCop comic books, huh? Tell me about that. Well, there have been several different types of RoboCop comics. Uh, Marvel Comics originally did a series of RoboCop comics in the 80s. And then uh, Dark Horse did some stuff with them. Uh, they did RoboCop versus Terminator. That was the first thing. And then there were several other things that Dark Horse did with them. And now uh, Boom Studios has been putting out uh, some new RoboCop stuff. Uh, one of them being uh, RoboCop. And it's based on Frank Miller's uh, script for RoboCop 2. It's adapted by Stephen Grant and illustrated by Juan Jose Reap. And I must say, the story is a bit incoherent and it's not a great read. But I will say that if you love art and you're an artist and you want to see like all sorts of weird backgrounds and grit and detail, uh, definitely check it out because the art is definitely like worth looking at. Okay, for sure. Uh, and they also just started coming out with 
RoboCop Last Stand, uh, which is also based on Frank Miller's uh, script for RoboCop 3 and also uh, adapted by Stephen Grant. But I will say in this one, though, that the art, like, is not very good. So, but so far, the story seems more coherent. So I guess pick this one up for the story and this one up for the art. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wish I had the old Mar Marvel comics and the old, um, I have one of the old Dark Horse Terminator RoboCop comics, but I, I need to get the whole set. I bet they're, like, pretty good, maybe. I don't know, maybe they're terrible. I'd like to know. Let's go. <laughs> I've done some movies I'm not so proud of. I've done some movies that I'm proud of parts of. And I've done maybe five or six movies that I'm really proud of, and RoboCop is definitely one of them. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed our program. Uh, seriously, 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 if you have not seen the original RoboCop, go do yourself a favor. And while you're at it, feel free to subscribe to this video, like my channel, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. is RoboCop. It's the only one. Uh, it was almost like rated X, but they had to like cut shit out of it just to keep it R, okay? And like, that's so nice because, and honestly, haven't you noticed that there aren't that many R-rated films coming out anymore? Well, let me tell you why. It's because they're trying to put as many asses in those seats as possible, okay? And you can't do that when you rate something R because then little kids and teenagers can't go see it. And I think it's really a shame because we're really limiting ourselves as to what we can put into a film. And, you know, I like to see some crazy shit go down sometimes. Not all the time, but give me a goddamn R-rated film. Just please. What do I have to do? Let's think of this kitty shit. Remaking Robocop, for me, feels insulting, and uh, I don't like it. I, it. It offends me on multiple levels. It's like, like oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remake Casablanca. You can't remake Casablanca. It's, it's perfect the way it is. Like, leave it alone. No one would dare to touch it. But because, you know, RoboCop's considered lowbrow, they feel like they can just put their little greedy hands all over it, uh, which is a shame. Well, I mean, that's something that really bothers me. Like, I love lowbrow things, and lowbrow things don't get the respect they deserve because they're lowbrow, which is kind of why I'm attracted to them. They're kind of like underdogs. I don't know. And... I don't understand why people, you know, maybe it's got over-the-top violence and, and stupid shit in it, but that doesn't make it any less viable, like, as art. I mean, it still has a message. So, I don't care. Listen. I'm off the clock. No, you're not. Overtime. I'm on my time and a half. <laughs>